here. Okay, great. I'm going to start at uh, from my left to right. Um, can you introduce yourself, Dr. Rawls? And you know, we don't have a. Uh, I think we have an hour here, so you don't have to be stingy with uh, your background. More importantly, what you like to accomplish in your lifetime uh, in the position that you're in. So my name is Crystal Rawls. I am the workforce integration designer at Cal State Dominguez Hills, and I've accomplished what I intend to accomplish, and I still work on it every day. My accomplishments include the uplift social and economic of black and brown voices. That's what I'm here to do every day. That's what I do every day. That's all I'm trying to do. So my okay. goal is going to change. That's can, what I Can do. you drop in the chat box also, just any information that allows us to pull some stuff up uh, while we're talking? Anything about your, um, your, your work, your initiatives? Because I think what I was looking for you to do for me, because um, I've researched you, um, but I'm not sure the other two people really know the the depth and the and the, and the bandwidth that you provide for um, us to kind of think about. Um, wow, you know how how much power that you guys generate potentially and and what your what your work is and and I think obviously when I've researched um, beyond the the grant, I didn't know that your department had these um, young people already doing uh, this marvelous work. We do. Um, so I have a project. Um, I have several projects. That's my bio in the chat and feel free to use it as you wish. Um, in my goal to uplift social and economic uplift of black and brown voices, I seek to just have our voices heard in emerging technologies. So I've done some work with electric vehicle technologies. Um, I've done some work with Witty International, um, black women in tech, so I do some career training for them. I publish a lot <laughs> on um, career development for uh, and social and emotional learning for um, all students, so a lot of student development work. But really, again, the nutshell is opportunity, creating opportunities to be seen and heard. Uh, the work that I'm most proud of is the work that I do with Open Skills Network around open recognition that essentially says we have a right to um, name our own skills the way we choose to name it. And I'm currently working on a project with that group called Biography Bot using AI technology. Great, okay, uh, that that is um, it's a lot. Good, thank you very much. And if anybody can kind of follow in that spirit, um, uh, Jade, I know you have a lot, and if you can drop anything in the box so that uh, we can, you know, just keep keep pace, that would be wonderful. Sure. Uh, the best thing probably would be my LinkedIn account, so I can do that. But uh, I am a communication strategist. I launched my own strategic marketing firm uh, three years ago, but I've been working in strategic marketing for the past 10 years. The work that I do for clients includes transforming their business in the uh, strategic communications realm, specifically through PR, social media, and email marketing, but very heavy into the strategy as to how all of those things are connected and how we can really leverage their message through those channels. I've had the opportunity to work with a variety of clients within the education uh, space, including charter schools, uh, colleges. I've also um, worked within the nonprofit uh, arena. I've also worked in entertainment and technology. All of them are great, but I'm sure you can appreciate how they're all very different. Um, and I really uh, am proud to have quite a lot of experience working for elected officials and also on their campaigns on all levels of government. And all of this experience has prepared me to be a professor at Cal State Dominguez Hills. So I also teach uh, in the communications department here not here because I'm not there, but at Dominguez Hills. Um, and I've had the opportunity to teach a variety of courses for our students, which includes um, introductory courses. So intro to PR, intro to advertising and copywriting, but also the capstone courses, which include um, uh, strategic communications management uh, and um, currently teaching a media literacy course. And there's one more that I think is important that I'm drawing a blank on, but 
that's who I am. And let me just drop my profile in. I'm glad I recorded this, man, because people would not believe these these folks exist, especially in the same conversation in the same room. Wow. I'm getting better at pulling people together who are magical. So, wow, that's great. Okay, the next person, Renee Brown, can you give us a little background about who, what, where, why, and how you plan on changing their world, the students that you want to see focused on? Well, I am um, I am a midlife graduate of CSUDH, so go Toros for both the under, for, it, you know what? They made my education possible as a working adult with special needs children it's um and i and so i was able to get my bachelor's and ended up with a master's that i never thought i was going to get but i did and then did the post-grad certificate in ne negotiation and um what is it conflict resolution negotiation and peace building and my undergrad was interdisciplinary studies so and now my husband is talking to me about a doctorate it's like why not go for it so who knows? But on the note of you never know where life leads you, you need to have the opportunity to try. Because And that is so dear to my heart. And I would have to say it sounds like that is something that is shared with all of you because it's making the pathway possible. Had Dominguez not offered a program for working adults, I would not have the education. If I didn't have the education, very bluntly, I wouldn't have this job. I did career shift in my, well, in my early fifties, I was the crazy woman with the high school diploma in my forties and had a dream and Dominguez helped to make that possible. And when I look at you know, who we are, we're trying to, um, to serve and you hear the, um, the term all the time, underserved communities, but in something that I read recently, it, it was the terminology was changed to priority populations and i like that because that is more positive it's more growth focused and that's what we're trying to do is to grow those opportunities and if we can all come into alignment pull together that education take our young people and show them that there is a way to get a nice paycheck that's not going to take forever or that it's not only for special people who knew somebody but that you can be trained to have skills and knowledge you will have the, an opportunity to work and practice that and learn in real life situations. You have a journey worker that's going to that's partnered with you to help you along the way. And those relationships are what really fulfills needs for employers and fulfills the needs for our youth to um, to have a career because the days when you could retire, well, if you're with university, you're fortunate, as I am with the state, because we still have pensions. Pensions are all but gone. Working for the same employer for 20, you know, 30 years, unimaginable. And I would say when I was in a, you know, in a master's class at Dominguez, um, one of my classmates told me that I had worked for my private sector employer longer than he had been alive. And that was a very sobering comment um but also it's the reality is people move they move from job to job they move looking for an opportunity so let's build it let's create it you've already got the audience in a sense and let's you know pool our talents and build something great. And, and i'll step off my soapbox after well, that no, yeah, it's great um and what i'm going to do is i'll, I'll announce a little bit about what I'm trying to do um, and then set up why I believe each one of you have a puzzle piece that I'm trying to um, complete a, a complete puzzle of something that will be, you know, I've, I think you've heard this term probably once or twice, maybe in the last, last year, but the coalition of the willing and doing. So mm -hmm. um, I met um, Alana through uh a conversation around the the economic resiliency fund grant. Uh, Dr. Rawls, are you familiar with that? The SURF grant. Uh, Jade, are you familiar with that? 
the surf grant uh, by I'm you gonna put in yes the, yeah i'm gonna put it in the box um and what i did is i heard uh, and i took away from what i heard wow this is something that on the um face of it it, it sounded like it was a grant that you guys um received to help not just the california state dominguez students but as a case study could help just about every institution and person who's willing to understand that there's some problems that we can have consensus on that we could solve in all of our roles and all of our, our our timelines to do something that will show some success. And so I come from um, a background of being able to understand a lot of disparate things that don't normally connect in a conversation or in, in any study. Has anybody ever heard of this, uh, the term systems integration? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was trained to be a systems integrator looking at uh, tel tele telecommunications systems that were legacy that were going to connect with some new um, capabilities to give uh, old twisted pair copper wire the same capacity as fiber. And the reason that was important at the time is because a lot of the um, people who were trying to develop use for fiber realized that fiber could not go beyond the curb. It will never go into a building. It will never go into a PBX system. And so you can't, so curb, uh, fiber, you know, terminates at the curb. So how can you take all the legacy telecommunications in every old building and connect it with that fiber so that you can turn every building, every old building into a smart building? and had the same capacity as all the new development, saving tons of money, tons of people, you know, who would not be, you know, subjected to um, to all kinds of toxic issues around, um, you know, the deployment of new technology in old buildings, um, asbestos, that's where it is. Okay, I, I lost one. So asbestos was the biggest issue was stopping a lot of people turning old infrastructure, old places into smart, building smart grids. And so people had to come up with a way to innovate, turning all this stuff into um, capabilities that would allow people to get smarter and better. And so I really took the issue of, well, how could we teach people how to use these smart buildings, these smart grids to get better, do better in education? And so when I posed the question to people I wanted to pose a question to people who were aggregators. And one of the things that uh, Dr. Rawls asked me is if I wanted to be involved with the California, or I think you posed the question about the California State University Entertainment Alliance. Is there anybody that doesn't know what the California State University Entertainment Alliance is? Uh, Jay, do you know what it is? Uh, yeah, you shared it with me. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, what it says on paper it's the power of 23 campuses, all tied to one central government. Um, and they take the lead in the power of 23, looking at course curricular, course curriculum that ties to pathways in certain campuses, uh, ability to um, get people graduated, certificates. And I said, wow, this is a place where I don't know that I know of any other Confederation of Universities, Campuses, and Chancellors are all tied together to one common thing. So I said, well, I wanted to see if I could get the CSUA, CSUEA to listen to the idea of having a common solution to a one problem and set it up as a pilot. And we were really close to getting something done. And then a couple of things happened. The person who was the marketing director, somehow she mysteriously left. And that happens a lot to me because a lot of people don't sit in their seats long enough for me to be able to sustain any real change. And then also the pandemic happened. And so everything kind of halted on the, on the idea of people networking and sharing and having some idea of how to put students in a position to do some of the research and some of this work. So the idea that um, we were talking about was something called Connected Campus. Well, all 23 campuses would be tied to one network of communication. It could be a radio station, it could be a blog, it could be anything, but it allows the campuses to share interoperably 
what they could share on this one topic of dealing with a solution that we thought we could serve. And the consensus that we were talking about is how do we get more young people, student voice and agency? And many of the people that I'm dealing with now still believe that students can be trusted to do contracting work. And, you know, not only look at the contracting as something that they can complete, but the business of the business of contracting and the areas of communication systems that would allow people to see, well, how great could it be if we brought some solution, some integrated systems integration solution? So I want to revive that. And, and I do it in a pilot around setting up a way for all 23 campuses to look at the possibility of recruiting certain students, faculty to something, doesn't even matter what it is, agnostic of what it is, but something that we can all agree that we could actually deliver one to another. We can daisy chain all the things that we could put into the solution and share it as a case. And that's what I'm attempting to do. Um, and I'm trying to do it with universities that I can meet that are probably more centrally located in Southern California, not in places where I can't travel and, and do sit downs with people. So the five are the four universities, Long Beach, Dominguez, Northridge, and Cal State LA. I've done the most work with those four. Now, I'd love to pick up the rest of them, but Renee's been helping me try to understand there's some people who may be interesting to this, prop, to this solution. And one of them is a, a man that I met uh, virtually, um, and it was a meeting called IACA. And this man was a professor at Fresno State. And so what I'm looking at doing is trying to find ways to get the people in the creative arts together with the people in IT and figure out what we could do to give students a, an opportunity to build and design something where it would be interdisciplinary study, but building something that would allow the left and the right brain students, faculty, to come up with something. And the something is a product that we can all look at that would have some sustainability and some use beyond just the pilot. So I've got a couple of ideas, but I want to stop and ask if, if anybody has any questions, suggestions, or comments, because it's very ambiguous because I haven't shown you anything. Okay, so um, so Renee's, you know, given me some opportunity to meet people I would have never met otherwise, who are at the state of California level of thinking, being in these think tanks about, well, what are the common problems that all of our workforce people need to, to come up with? And the language that I've been learning is apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship. So I'm still trying to figure that out. I registered an apprenticeship program. I put proposals in and they're pending and I've got stuff already completed. That's not what I'm trying to get done. I don't want to be a champion of, of getting stuff registered. I want to figure out if this is the new language that we need to be sharing through communication systems and market this new language to people who don't know really what it is and what it could be for their universities, their classrooms. So that's what Renee's been helping me do is to figure out how to socialize the features and benefits of apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship. Because I get tired of talking to people about what I know because I know nothing. I just got to, I have a couple of people now currently in my federally registered apprenticeship program, the Department of Labor, as digital editors. And they're getting paid. And I, I would like to think that that's a, a very important part of what I'd like to have as a pilot is students getting paid, but only a certain group of people can get paid through this apprenticeship and the WIOA money connected to it. But I wanna think that there's gotta be dollars for other people who are over 24 or who don't fall into the, the guidelines if they're willing to take instruction at this Cal State University level and they're in programs, I want to find out if there's support for the apprenticeship guidelines to help them get closer to what I think the outcomes should be is people completing a, a, a six month or a competency based apprenticeship or a one year term of getting paid to complete something 
at a term, certified, and then hopefully getting them placed. That's what I have taken as my understanding of what I'm supposed to be doing with my federal registered program. So Renee, help me out here. Is there something that you can share with these, these, these ladies about where apprenticeship could become something that they could put evaluation on and use to get people better prepared? Um, I'm wondering if you know we have a couple of apprenticeships here. I don't, you I, do. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Actually, so, um, oh my gosh, Dr. Rawls, mm -hmm. do you know Nicole Picotta? I do. And so we've talked about the SHRM one. We've yes. worked through the Optimum Health. That's mm -hmm. already one on campus. Yep. And I'm working with ISD. Um, now, I'm not even going to lie and say I remember what that acronym stands for. <laughs> I know we all have uh, lots of acronyms. Yeah, Internal Services Department yes. also has an apprenticeship, not a, it's not a registered apprenticeship, but it is a public sector two year, 25 mm -hmm. hour. It is along the appropriate guidelines for apprenticeship. Um, so yeah, those two programs exist through CCPE, which is our continue, College of Continuing and Professional Education. The acronyms, forgive me, y'all. Uh, I know. Well, I'm glad I'm not alone in having to pause for a moment or two to think. I need to sometimes. pause on the acronyms, right? But CCPE yep. currently runs those, and they're working with our College of Health and Human Services and Nursing. Did not go for that acronym. <laughs> but yes, yes. And so we have apprenticeships. They're just getting off the ground. Um, it is something our department, specifically my department, um, has tried to help the campus move away from the language of internship, short term. Yes. Um, you know, am ambiguous whether it's paid or unpaid. Um, and we have hired through our grant, will hire, not currently hired, a job developer primarily to work on those apprenticeships. But mm -hmm. that's not happening yet. So I'm not sure if that's helpful yet, Kevin, right? So it's all theoretical. We have the models and we have the money. Um, to to kind of make this come alive. Um, and then we have the scholarship. So I've been writing about this for a good three years, right? Um, our students are yes. supported, not incapable. <laughs> you know, um, yes. our students are quite capable given the opportunity, like Mr. Clark says, give them, give them some light to shine in and they will shine mm -hmm. bigger than you can ever imagine. So um, how can I help? I'm I'm still not clear on how exactly I can. Yeah, there, there's no ask yet because I I really have to identify who's not only willing but what their initiatives are because most people have you know as a day job you've got to do something that um, may not connect to my pilot or my ask. So what I'm really trying to do is trying to figure out how I can create a consensus that if I have something, could I find some students? Because what I'm really looking for is students. I'm trying to recruit. Kevin, 30. put a put a pin in that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Dr. Rawls. So you Nicole works directly with me. Actually, I po I poached her from Dominguez to go anywhere. I, was, I heard <laughs> I poached her. I, you know, I encouraged her. I, it's, it's apply. You know, you need to grow, apply, do. And she and I both have that really strong um place in our hearts to give back for all the grace that we've been given through it but so germ is still floating out there mm -hmm. but l now let's do a pivot so what kevin is talking about is doing an alignment you have theater i would say just i'm going to talk in sector so you have the entertainment sector mm -hmm. but there's a an overlap and really a, um an intersectionality with it now, Dr. Clement, who works with IT and he's up at CSU Fresno, he's a kind of the nexus for that whole IT sector um, and the movement with apprenticeship within the state of California. So Kevin and Dr. Clement have connected and it's like, but you need to really connect as I'm learning and Keith, Kevin's right? educating me with his vision. That's Keith, right? In Fresno? Yes. Yeah, he's another grantee for this CMC grant. So we meet like 
every two weeks. It's a small world. Well, so, we're, we're all doing the right work is all I'm yes. hearing, right? <laughs> yes, we're doing the right work. And it's how can we ignite all of this energy and real, and truly serve people, but have the thought is like by doing, and if we're in the academic side, I would say you're going to call it a case study. If we're over on the employment side, we would say a pilot. It's the same thing in the sense that what we're looking at for an outcome is that you have someone who's skilled. How do you find someone that's going to be a good match for an for that apprenticeship path? that they have enough skills and the capacity to be trained and give them that opportunity to get the skills and the knowledge and get the industry connection and the hands-on labor. But to start it out, start as a pilot, have the students work on it. And Kevin and I would just, we've been exchanging things really fast. Um, and it's like, but at the end, have a production that you could go out and let's say, Jade, you know nothing at all about this. We can show it to you and you can say, you know what, this looks really great. I would like to hire or I would like to expand on that. And that's what we're really kind of trying to do and what I would like to do. And I was, this is from a conversation this morning with Kevin is I wanted to get Kevin and Dr. Clement and my, um, at the state level, the director of strategic business partnerships, I want to get them all in the same virtual space and, and talk out the ideas um, with it, but that you're already involved, you know, Dr. Rawls, and you've got, as you say, it's like, you've got money, you have students, you have the energy to learn, but it's like, how do we harness this and put people forward? Now you've got Kevin, who's looking for qualified applicants to go through this and, and produce this um, pilot piece. And so it's, how can we all come together and purpose it? I hear what you're saying that it's like, I mean, um, you're in the same position. It's like you have it. It's just not in the stage of development yet where you're ready to roll all of it out. So right. I would ask you, Dr. Rawls, what, um, well, if Keith, if Dr. Clement, and you are both already working together and you're talking, we should have and um we should have you both together with it. You know, let's work with you know what we you know what we know. And Dominguez, it's near and dear to my heart, um, as it is to Nicole's, but Nicole is in a position, and you know from working with her that that woman is a, a ball of energy and she can bring in her skill set. But we're all, you know, we're all working to the same end. But let's get people that would not now that wouldn't necessarily cross paths unless someone said, hey, come on over, you know, come sit at my lunch table and let's talk. And let's see what we can do and what's going to come out of it, because I think we we're all working to the same end and that we can make it happen. But Kevin has to be able to to really draw you in. He's got to show you what he has because it's really special. Right. And what and what I'm really looking for, you asked, Dr. Wells, how can you help? And, and again, if I would want to ask is to try and source students from your database that would be interested or recommended to be part of a cohort of 30 people from different walks of life, different, you know, disciplines and see if we can put them together so that they can learn a few things, module based in delivering a product that we could see at the end has a client. And I have a project that, you know, it, the client is the Department of Defense. I'm the uh, only person I know of that's received the, uh, money from them, the Department of Defense, the Pentagon, for developing media. They used it for recruitment and heritage, heritage recruitment, but I want to be able to make sure that just beyond the horizon, there are other people who may say, well, wow, okay, this messaging and this stuff could meet and connect with other people who may not ever serve in the military or never work for the Pentagon as a civilian. So that's my client, is the DOD. Oh, Kevin, Nicole Picotta's daughter is at West Point. And she got to West Point because Ambassador Rhodes, who has taught at Dominguez, um, 
he was actually our professor and just in t in teaching us leadership and outreach and so forth helped her um, navigate the process to get her daughter in West Point. And she's there right now in West well, Point. Here's the client. I'm putting them in the box. This could get, you know, wow. weeds, but this is the client. It's the Office of Diversity and Management of Equal Opportunity. Mm -hmm. And they um, employ more people who don't have any interest in the Pentagon or the military from IT, from creative, gaming. There's a tremendous haul of jobs and careers that could be, you know, socialized. But most of those people are HBCUs and work where there's military installations. There is a place in California that is looking for talent, but they can't recruit. And that's not really what they're good at. But this is my goal is to find young people that I could actually get placed. And this is the place. If nothing else, if the DOD media activity doesn't hire them, I'll hire them to work on the projects that the DOD is paying me to deliver. And they're called the DOD uh, Media Activity. And they're in Riverside, California. So everything that goes out over the net, over broadcast for over 6 million people comes from DOD military uh, uh, media activity to the Armed Forces Network, to all the other affiliates that produce programming for 6 million people. But this is, again, just a case study of one client that's looking for content, but looking for people, looking for talent, that people in California just would say, well, what's that have to do with me? So if I can get 1% of the people that have talent to look at this as a place where I can match their talent with really high paying jobs, they may, you know, give them the power of choice to say, oh, okay, well, let me take another look. But this is what I can do. I can string these things together so that at least somebody sees that there's, um, you know, a database of talent and opportunities for people to learn, to earn money while they learn how to service this mm -hmm. client. That's the problem. And that is the apprenticeship model. It's earn and learn. It is the job from beginning to end. Um, but I am excited. And I think that we can um, share our talents. Jade, what's, I mean, you've been listening. What do you think? What's going through your mind? You're quiet. Yeah, I mean, I think this is an amazing opportunity. Um, I think that there are many students in the communications department that would be interested in this. Um, and I'm just saying, because I've already spoke to Kevin about some of this, I know that there are some restriction, not restrictions, but ideal candidates that come with the grant money that I just want to be mindful of. Um, mm -hmm. So I know like that could be potentially a barrier for the more qualified students. The other thing that I mentioned to him yeah, was... Can you be precise about that? Because we kind of talked yeah. about... It. Yeah. What type of barrier? So an example would be we we attempted this with my uh, senior capstone course, where mm -hmm. it's for seniors who are in a classroom setting but are doing a student-run agency. So they are they're leading a student-run agency, uh, and they are pretty much given a outside client, ideally a nonprofit, to put together a strategic marketing plan for them, which really summarizes the year, the their coursework, everything that they've learned, not only in that specific course, but everything that they've learned within that major to apply and provide ideas to a nonprofit looking for a marketing plan. And so I, um, when we first met, this is how we met, um, ideally it would be great for students that once they present these ideas to said nonprofit, what we often see is that the nonprofits would love to bring those students on through a, um, an internship, but are not always able to pay them. And so the idea of an apprenticeship or even just giving them an entry level position after they've already shown their capabilities to do the work in the classroom it would be so much more valuable to the students to not only pass the course, but come out with a, a job. And so we explored that, but I know the first time we did it, the, 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 the way that the students would be um, paid for their work was through a grant that ideally wanted to fund students who 
um, lived in a certain area, were uh, under a certain Mm -hmm. age, had a certain level of income or low income, you know, some of those common things that come with uh, government grants. And so that really, really limited the pool of students that I could offer because the average age in my classes are usually above 25 years or older. I have a lot of students who are returning to um, school after they've started a family. A lot of students are returning Mm -hmm. to school after they've realized that the career choice they originally chose was not the direction they wanted. Um, And so they're just as eager to pursue opportunities like this because they don't have that experience that they need and they're willing to do it but they are not the ideal candidate that these grants would fund. Um, So that was the first run with our students. The second thing is, I I don't say that as it's not possible. I just think that my view is very narrow in my classes. So I know the students that I know that I think would be, you know, great for some of these positions, but a better way, if we're thinking about um, creating a funnel for communication students, I think the better way to do that is to share this with the comms department, uh, the head, to see what their plans are, because I'm not exactly sure, you know, how they're thinking about connecting students to, you know, work work options post-graduation, but it is something that's really important to the department. So I think it's something that they should be aware of. The second thing, which is like part 2A and part 2B is 2A, It is required for comm students to complete an internship for credit to graduate. Mm -hmm. And so there's often not enough supply for the demand of students that need to fulfill this credit to graduate. So having this as another option um, for students that need to fulfill that that credit to graduate, knowing that this is a paid um, option automatically makes this a better option than the other internships that they're considering. So I would recommend working with the intern coordinator through our comms department And then the 2B part is there is a student-run association called Public Relations Student Society of America, which is really meant for students who are looking to do more to build um, their experience within communications outside of the course, I mean, outside of the classroom. So I was president of this association for two years, and it's really about how can we um, give students an opportunity to get more experience so they can do that through volunteering with, you know, So PRSSA is the sister or I'd say younger version of the chapter, which is PRSA, which is a membership of all public relations um, entrepreneurs in L.A. County. And so they often volunteer. They do a lot of um, volunteer work for nonprofits or whatever. But like the students are kind of picking what they need to get additional experience. And so that could also look like than taking on nonprofit clients or for-profit clients. It's really at the discretion of the the chapter. Um, But these are students who are already opting into wanting to do more and are looking for jobs post-graduation. So I think all of this, these ideas sound great and would be better funneled through the comms department and then through the PRSSA president to understand, um, you know, how they can best leverage this. Lisa Mastromico is the internship coordinator for the comms department. And yep. I met with her two hours before this meeting to talk about this because this doesn't necessarily sound like a me thing, but a her thing. Yep. Um, so she said uh, she's actually sick. So there's no reason to email her today. She's already tapped out for the day. She's sick. She said she wouldn't be able to meet with me till next week. But I told her I'd provide whatever information I took away from this meeting because she has all the internship students who would be interested in this project. Um, as Kevin, you know, you you know, you mentioned you already researched the grant, so I'm not gonna belabor the point, right? But that's exactly what my grant is meant to do, Jade, right? No restrictions. <laughs> Our students, whatever their skill level, if they are interested, will basically do a survey course in some digital tools that I've identified as key digital tools for economic uplift in the region, right? So there's there's a few of them per the grant, right? We're about five, um, but they come in, they do their LinkedIn learning pathways to say, oh, which one is interesting? And, and then with no previous experience, but with all the social skills that we know our students have, they take a pre, in, they take a course. Right now it is a course, a capstone. That course, plus their internship that's paid 120 hours the following semester is what we're putting together. Um, And my discussion with Nicole is this is a good 
pre-internship course for social impact apprenticeships. Um, what those social impact apprenticeships look like were with community-based organizations. So my grant rolls out to 10 community-based organizations. Uh, Kevin, one thing I did wanna actually ask you, I noticed you mentioned the destination, uh, the Crenshaw Corridor, and I'm assuming you're in touch with Jason Foster from Destination Crenshaw. I don't, don't know him, but I'd love to. He's one of our community partners. We're gonna roll interns out with analytics, project management, and marketing strategies. He is a great guy, isn't he? I put my picture um, ahead okay. on. Okay, I need yeah. the name I mean, again. No, His and, name and, is Jason Foster. The program is Destination Crenshaw. You really right. got it. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's okay. a big development re redevelopment project. And and so we're working hmm. with Brotherhood Crusade. I don't know if you know them. but well, they were on our list, but they were outside of the zone, so we couldn't okay. partner with them. But okay. we have community partners. Okay, so have you used all your 10 community partnership slots up? No, because, right, we just got the grant. So here's what I'm saying. What we need to do is check zip codes. And as long as it's a 501c3, we can talk, <laughs> we right? Because right. I have right. marketing strategies, which isn't exactly digital editing, but it could be. But well, we're what, talking what think, about the what, investigative what, what, journey. I'll, I'll lose this thought. I'll lose this thought if I don't say it. One of the things that I wanted to be very precise about is how I could focus on a geography, a zip code, if you will, and finding the CBOs within this zip code that I could pull from to find the students that would help me deliver something that was part of my strategy, which was to do something called an opportunity zone fund. Has anybody ever heard of that before? Yeah, I read your I read your uh, material. So yeah, so um, so literally, I had to find a way to be in, a, in an opportunity zone to find people under radar, under resourced, undervalued, who I could put to work in this opportunity fund. And so Crenshaw Corridor was what I selected, not only because it met the opportunity zone requirements, but because it's gonna be a huge, huge part of what Crenshaw, uh, Destination Crenshaw and other CBOs in that area are going to be preparing for the 2028 Olympics. So I've been talking to LA 28 about all the things that haven't been stolen or robbed or whatever from everybody else for people who live in that community to, so that, the Olympics don't run over, around, and under them and opportunities for them to, you know, not only be involved in the planning, but the long tail after the Olympics. So that's what I'm really trying to make sure is I find that zip code of people. Uh, are Is the Vermont Economic Loss and Development Corporation in, 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 in your sphere of... I, I just dropped the map so that oh, way you okay. have an idea of our zone, <laughs> um, right? So there you go. You, that, yeah, that. So I'll do my research. And um, because I know we're running short on time, um, this is the project that I've been focused on because I own and control most of the assets, the digital media, the uh, intellectual property, and all of the things that could become ethnic studies. So um, it's really the African-American military timeline that really connects to civilians, but in a way that's more in the civil rights area. Because the big thing that we're going to be celebrating on a campaign um, that we're trying to get off the ground with uh, PSAs and short form media is something called Executive Order 9981, which is the 75th anniversary of the desegregation of the military. And that has so much impact and ramification on people who are civilians who never served in the military, their fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers who served. We're really, the NAACP is sponsoring this uh, in part. So this is the project that we believe has a lot of legs, a lot of teeth. So it's well, just one I project. Saying, I remember you saying that, and I looked over at my husband, he's a Navy veteran of 20 years. And I'm like, oh, I like this project. Um, my whole family's military, um, not not me, but my father, like you said, father, brother, et cetera. So yeah. the, the project is appealing because I have family. But when I talk to my 19 year old daughter, who is a computer science engineer and extremely skilled in coding and Python and all these other cool things, she was like, so you never met Gen Z, huh? Right, right. like and so that's that, the and, and, and that is that is the problem is trying to get them to understand that Gen Z, Generation Alpha, 
um, they have no interest in anything that's historical. Anybody who's dead or dying, I have no interest in communicating with. What I try to make all young people understand is that what they're doing and what they could be doing is historical. And 100 years from now, when they're dead, they will like to know that there is a timeline of things that they can show not only participation in, but a contribution to something that we just don't have, which is a interactive timeline of all these facts and all these things that can be contextualized by each generation of people. But I really believe that this is a product that does not exist. And the people I've been talking to uh, think that this could be interesting enough to take all these different disciplines and create something that's at least a, a start to something that other generations can work on as an evergreen project. So that's kind of why I'm looking at something that I know that I can make sure all the artifacts, the assets, the stuff is available and there's no shortage of it. Because at the end of the day, anything that people want to do and produce, you got to get rights, licensing. There's a lot of money involved. I've created a way for people to have an open source reach to all the stuff that I believe I've a session curated and digitized for this project. So I'm working with the Department of Interior, the Department of Defense. Um, and those are the people I think would really be very surprised that we find people in California because they're always saying HBCUs, HBCUs, HBCUs. So I want to prove them wrong. Jay, you could take your students as part of the capstone, work with Kevin on the project. Kevin, this could be part of investigative journalism. I mean, I see all the intersectionalities that are possible depending on what direction you want to go but you know certainly there are multiple um interests that can be served with this for the betterment yeah i agree i mean i i still do think the best thing is to go through the comms department because i mm -hmm. am not the only one that teaches the capstone course right um and so if there is a and i believe there is a strong connection it would be great to make this available to every student rather than just my course so I, I would strongly recommend talking to Lisa, uh, also the chair of the department, and then also the advisor for the PRSSA chapter. Happy to put you in contact with all three of those individuals, but that's I think that's the better way um, to do that. Way. I'm racing because my battery may die at any minute, but uh, what I wanted to say is that um, Renee has, has connected me with some people who are also are serving uh, folks who may have some disabilities and some other barriers to entering into a project like this that I'd like to also include as the smart pipeline of people who may be able to, um, you know, again, be part of the narrative that we can um, make this available to anybody who's interested and willing. And um, so that means the K through 12 people and folks who just aren't ready to you know, be part of this cohort of thirty folks is I'd like to make sure this is available for them to touch, you know, in some way. So I'm working with students with disabilities right now, and and they couldn't present um, or share any part of what they've actually even done. So the the capstone of everything that of the capstone is for all these people to not only produce it but to present it and pitch it like a charrette. And, you know, I that's think that's I, great. Yeah, that's what I want to make sure is that these students know how to collaborate and they know how to pitch. Agreed. So how can I be helpful? I mean, I think those three people would be great for you to continue the conversation with. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think if it's something that will be implemented soon, they certainly all need to be included to make sure right. that. So, so here's what I have as a, as a meetup mixer, a mix up, I guess I'm calling it on February 28th either um, virtually or physically, I'm going to be doing an event uh, with the Digital Media Entertainment Council, LADC, uh, gotten uh, one of their partners, Microsoft. We're gonna host an event on February 28th at the end of Black History Month to talk about the way ahead. And some of the people that I've been um, working to learn how they can use their influence and, and as well as their credibility uh, with UCLA and USC will be there to help make sure we're steering this thing so that people could not 
kind of veer off and say, well, you know, well, what about this project? Because there's plenty of room for other projects, but we have to find somebody who can make this thing uh, stick with all of the timelines and deadlines that I think we're going to have with um, um, our celebration of the 75th anniversary is July 26, 2023. So I want to do an awareness campaign well before so that the NAACP can start to socialize it through their channels. So that's really what I'm hoping to do. And okay. it's not just for Black uh, people, it's for anybody who wants to understand the implications of the military being desegregated and what that meant for people in that timeline and even today. Okay. Um, well, I think, I don't know that it's best to bring the comms department in to that meeting. I think it's a great invitation. If I understand how they operate, they really love to review things, see things, and give some time to think about how it can be implemented. So it would be in your favor to share this with them after the 28th, because I don't think you need to sell them on the idea. I think there's such a gap with connecting students of color. I mean, Dominguez Hills is the most diverse Cal State campus of them all. And I, I don't know if it's true for the state of California, but I'm willing to bet that's too. So I don't think you need to sell the comms department on that at all. I think it makes it more competitive if we can start to sh share with students that there are real opportunities, you know, come senior year, post-graduation, if you are honestly looking for opportunities and to get paid. I think they really appreciate reviewing the plan and, and how how they can how they can introduce it to the students because they'll do it. Trust me, they need well, it. Well, ahead of this event, we're, we want to socialize with those people who could be partners, some material so they can look at it. They can start to think about, well, what could this, what, what do I look like in this, in this mix of things? So I, I do have a, um, I have a, an electronic, electronic press kit in development that we'd like okay. to try and get out. And, and most important is electronic press kit is made by some of my apprentices um, and you know, so they may look at it and say, well, gee whiz, well, it's missing this or that, but this is their work. The people Beautiful. are paying. So yeah, okay. they socialize. And, and Renee knows a couple of them, and, and we've kind of socialized some of the stuff. But um, I'm going to ask, you know, again, you guys look at this through the lens of people who want to be very critical, because I know people are going to shoot it down. I just want to be able to know how to... Um, not be, you know, full of holes, you know, before I actually get something presented by the students because I don't want to crush them and it didn't go anywhere. I so. think for the comms department, department, it's it's very simple. Um, I almost see you fitting in as something that Lisa could lead because she's always looking for organizations to host for internships. And I think it's just exactly spelling that out. If the first client that you have is the Department of Defense, how many positions do you have? who would be overseeing it? What would be some of the roles that um, students can look forward to, you know, working on? And then, you know, they would take it from there. If it's, you know, bigger, where we're talking about helping everyone outside of the internship to pursue or to consider this as a job, then I think it's also just sharing it with the chair. But I, I think, again, like if I understand how the department works, they would want it to be more of like a proof point through the inter internship before it's a official partnership with the communications department. Right. So I would really start with Lisa as soon as she's better, just to see how, you know, how this could be incorporated there. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions, suggestions, or comments before we break contact? That's a military well, term, break Lisa's contact. She's already in touch with me. She's already on board with my project. We're doing the same thing. So it might be a smoother pathway because uh, Jade, Miss, Miss Stevens, is she's not wrong. <laughs> They're going <laughs> to see those I's dotted and T's crossed in your plan, not in the student work, we are all aware that student work might not be perfect and we would not criticize the students harshly. All work done in my department is done by students. For the last three years, all work, professional work has been done by students. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. doable. The pathways are already there. In my world, my lens, it's another project to add potentially. If you're within that zip code, I can handle it. Um, based on the numbers for your opportunity zone, I did look at them. You'll be in those zip codes. One of those zip codes will be covered by us and we have partnerships in place. So okay. I think it's a, a another conversation. So that's great. Sure. Um, and 
that website that I dropped in the chat, you asked me when we first met, will it be live before the end of Black History Month? And it will be. Um, but again, it might correspond more. It's a public sector aggregator mm -hmm. right? built by my students. We're still working on it, but it's a public sector aggregator right. that might align with uh, our, our motto as public service is community service. Mm -hmm. That might align with your uh, military projects a little bit, but well, I don't see it well, that Well, and, and again, it, 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 what we're trying to sell is that there's a lot of civilians, there's a lot of people who never served who are connected to this storyline, this timeline. As a matter of fact, we're, we're leading with people who are Hall of Fame household names in sports who happen to serve their country. So these are all, and some of them are still living. So we want to show a lot of cross connectivity to people who have uh, not serving their country in their military uniform or served in some other form or fashion. Because that's really what we're trying to get the students to understand is selflessness and service to someone else other than yourself. So to your 19 year old Gen Z people, um, you know, it's hard to sell, but serve something other than yourself. You and know? Kevin, it's also it's innovative communication. Hmm? It, this is a completely innovative way to communicate, to transfer that information, that knowledge to me. You're tying it to the now because that, that's all the current generation. They're looking at the now and doing it in an innovative way because this is not you're not looking to produce another documentary or check a box you're you are truly looking to align sectors that haven't really worked together yet but yet you are truly doing a lot of parallel things and the world is going through a, a gigantic shift right and i, I I'm, I'm gonna probably say this is the last thing i'm gonna say um i'm trying to as a marketeer get all the big you know influential people to sign letters so at some point, if mm -hmm. people understood or agreed, we'd like to get a letter of understanding support. Letter of support. what we're doing. And that would help, you know, when uh, Renee takes it to her people to see who has joined the coalition of the willing and doing. I have a document with um, UCLA's theater, film and TV department. It's called the National Science Foundation Steam Engine Project. That's gonna be the lead project that we're going to kind of work as a co-location inside of their, their steam engine project. So that's why Jeff Burke and um, Jay Tucker from UCLA Anderson School of Business, they've been taking the lead. We've got some people from USC also. And you know we're gonna try and figure out how to do a roadshow with all the things that we've talked about before July 28th. So this is gives us about six months to try to figure out how to especially share this with the people in the HBCU community and the people on Capitol Hill that uh, students can understand historically what's you know serving serving our country could be. It'd be a big, big, you know, kind of PSA. I'm going to have to jump off and jump into another meeting right now, but thank you all very much. And Jade, I, I look forward to chatting because we have some on-campus opportunities now. Great. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Do you, uh, well, your battery is going to die. Yeah, um, I'm out of here. So, so call me on the phone if you can right afterwards. Yeah, I'll do okay. that right now. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye.